My name is Heather Swain. Philadelphia has always been my home. Life was good until it happened. I'm friends with a cybernetic enhanced human-like frog created to save Earth. Nobody appreciated or understood him, but I did. We were good friends who enjoyed hanging out with a bucket from the chicken fry. Just me, Cyber Frog, and his very large brother, Salamandroid. Until the invasion hit. They rain from the sky. These space invader giant hornets attacked everyone. Killing more than could stay alive. And covered the earth with giant blood honey hives. They can't fly near trees. So we hid in the woods. Burning endless fires to keep them away. Wearing red so they can't see and kill us all. The last time I saw Cyberfrog, he told me he'd track me down. But it's been decades, and there's been no sign of him. Yet, I can't shake the feeling he is not gone. I believe he will return again. We need Cyberfrog and his brother Salamandroid to return and fight off these invaders. To take back our wrecked planet so we can live without fear. If you see my friend Cyber Frog, tell him I need him. We need him to save the world. This is Cyber Frog Wrecked Planet. Join the fight. So cinematic. I know, right? That was, of course, Ascension Cinema's uh, trailer that he did for Cyberfrog uh, Wrecked Planet. And the reason I bring that up today, in case anyone hasn't noticed, uh, hello to the chat. In case you aren't aware, uh, Cyberfrog has just passed $1 million uh, for the Wrecked Planet campaign, which is, uh, I mean, obviously it goes without saying, uh, an enormous achievement. So well done, Ethan. And... Well done, Comicsgate, for um, coming out to bat like that. A million dollars. Can you imagine? No. <laughs> Will you be getting a million dollars on a Kuri Inu? No, I'm uh, going to be happy if I reach my goal. That's, <laughs> Baby <I'm>, that's <laughs> my sights. <laughs> hey, everyone in the chat, White Cat Comics is here, says hello. And I asked, is Carla? Hey, Carla, how are you going? Great to have you here. Uh, Red Syrup is pondering the question, does he really need any more help? Well, I'm not helping. I don't think so. But I am uh, just tipping the hat to the man for what an achievement that is, a million dollars. And that just happened uh, 20 minutes ago or so. Uh, so that's crazy. Zade Comics is here. He says, how do I get a sick trailer like this? Hmm. Uh, well, you just ask. Uh, Ascension Cinema is a, is a friend. He's a friend of this channel. And uh, you being a friend, He's a friend. Friends get together. Friends of my friend is my friend. Is that how it works? Something like Maybe. that. <laughs> Johnny Rando says Cyberfrog Fever has replaced the corona. Well, we shouldn't say that. We were just talked about that before. <laughs> yeah. Last time we said that word, we got flagged. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, White Cat said really nice trailer. Uh, Chengis Khan is here. Hey, hey, hey. Great to see you guys back again. I, I, um, I was feeling fine this morning after yesterday's six-hour stream. Was it six hours, I think? But man, was I drunk. I stumbled back into the house. Uh, uh, my wife had dinner on the table. It was just perfection. Yeah. Uh, we And then we hit 25K on the Lucent. 
uh, not that long after. We'd already reached 500 at the end of the stream. What an amazing thing to happen at the end oh, of the really closeout cool. stream to hit 500. That was so cool. Uh, it says, hey, boys. Skip, that, how uh, you going, buddy? What's up? That buddy? water that your kids brought you saved you, man. It did, yeah. That was funny. I was like, "Can I get some water?" <laughs> First, I whispered, then I then I said a bit more forcefully. They didn't hear either of them, and I didn't have my phone in the room with me, so I had to send them an email. And finally, it got through. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But then, without that water, because you know what I did, I ran out of the um, uh, the the normal whiskey that I was drinking, the the uh, monkey shoulder. Ah. And I got into this stuff that my boss bought me a couple of years ago. And that's, that's, this is what kind of whiskey that is. It's probably three years old now. And I still ah. am not through the bottle. It is 60% and it is rocket fuel. So I only had a one glass of that. And yeah, you probably, if anyone cares to go back and look, you can see this moment where I kind of lean back in my chair and go, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> when you realize it hits. Yeah. Yeah, and then I was like, I need water. Antoine Dennison oh, says, cheers, gents. Congratulations to EVS for this landmark occasion. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the first time. It won't be the last. Uh, this is just, it, it, you know, uh, it's just going up and up and up for everyone. And uh, what do they say? A rising tide uh, lifts yeah. all boats. And it's just been landmark after landmark. Because last, uh, you know, he hit a million with over several campaigns. Now he hit it with this one. Yep, yep. Uh, Zaid wants to know, Phil wants to know, how do I get on the Powerpuff Girls? I'll wear a wig. Uh, well, you, you just uh, try and get that live version, like a deep fake of your um, sexy, wide-eyed uh, girl femme thing that you have on Face App. Where does the nerd hear? He says, hail, gentlemen. I think we've got hail. a lot of people here. Hail. Fantastic. This is badass. True example of good comics and not dead. Absolutely. Shane Verger says, good day, gentlemen, and chat. Uh, high octane. What are you referring to there? I don't know. Us <laughs> right now. Oh, the uh, the the <laughs> the whiskey, maybe. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, it was crazy. Refresh streamyards again. What does that mean? Anyway, anyway, what are we here <laughs> to talk about, Woodrow? What are we here? What's going on? There's something in the wind. Yes, yes. We got some character creation to go through for character crux. We do. Sure. What What is Character Crux? Tell the people. They're dying to know. So Character Crux is a new show we're doing. Uh, it's a D&D &D show we're using for uh, to promote CG uh, projects and characters and just going to have a lot of fun with it. It's going to be a my, set in my world. I'll be running the DM. We'll have Bandito being the host, and we have a whole lineup of uh, guests we're going to put together. We got Phil from Zade Comics, Carla, uh, Kimo Sabe, we got you coming on as a guest, Joe from Slaughter Squad coming on as a guest. We got a, a whole a whole bunch of people. Shay. Shay. Uh, yep. As and, a regular. Uh, ben Dito's helping out as well. I was hoping yeah, Ben Dito could be here today, but I think he's a bit I think we may have killed him. <laughs> 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 he was he was um uh he was keeping head to head with Az. Uh, from Heels vs. Babyface. Uh, it was just kind of the Heels vs. Babyface and uh, Bandito show for like an hour, it felt. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get a word in edgewise. <laughs> yeah, like no one could almost. Phil tried to say something and they just steamrolled right over him. So I said, uh, Yeah, you might just want to say anything in the chat. Uh, uh, all right, Felix is here. He says, How the panel? How the chat? How right back at you, Phoenix? Uh, Zay says, Who's Woodrow? Um, Fenrir the Ice says, how do you start on creating your comics? Or how did we start? Or how did I? Oh, God, that's a that's a discussion that I think I'll have to save for another time because we do need to uh, get started on the business at hand, which makes you come a little bit into that question because uh, I'm going to be revealing some things about this character you see behind us that I've probably never re revealed before. Yeah, I'm excited um, about that. Uh, da, da, da. White Cat Comics, so exciting! Can't wait. Yesterday, you would refresh. Oh. Yeah, that's <laughs> what he was talking about. about. <laughs> How many times did I do that? Like three. Oh, man, uh, what do they say? Don't don't drink and try and control ten people in a show. <laughs> I did do that. I kept doing it. 
Ah, uh, well, we don't promise profession, professional quality uh, radio on this channel, that's for sure. But we do promise fun. We do. We do. Absolutely. So how do we get started? What do we do? So if you open that link you had, I can also uh, share because I got it open. We could do it this way too. Actually. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to take control, I'm happy to just talk and you can mm -hmm. run us through yeah. it. I'll share your screen. I'll just ask you some questions then. Yeah. So All this right, is so a site. This is a site. Yeah, where you build characters for a campaign. Is that? Is yeah. That this is uh, this is D and D Beyond. So it's through Wizards of the Coast, um, and you can get source books you can use some basic stuff on here um i think really the, only the dm would have to buy the books but you run through and make characters it makes it really easy 5e fifth edition is uh really simplified so if anyone's out there who played older older versions or haven't played at all it's actually really easy to just hop into which is nice and you'll see as we go through this how simple this site makes it it makes it even easier um so in terms of race we're just fluffing but basically everyone is what their characters are. What you select as a race doesn't actually reflect what you will um, be representing. We just re-fluff everything. Yeah. And um, your character has water manipulation, correct? That is That's correct. Kind. So that this is character, is it's called a water genasi. In D&D uh, &D lore, it's basically a, a half genie person because in D&D, uh, &D, humans have sex with everything. But... Uh, you're going to have to, yeah, anytime uh, you say, like, weird things, like, what did you say, Janasi? Yeah, Janasi, yeah. Like, I am I'm a total D&D &D noob. I have absolutely no idea what any of this stuff is. So, uh, like, you just have to hold my hand. Uh, oh, so, yeah. yeah, anytime you want to drop in some of that lore, let me know because. Yeah, it's basically all... uh, humans bang everything in the D&D &D world. So there's all I kinds like of half, <laughs> half creatures. This is like a, I'm pretty sure it's a genie human or some, some form of that. Um, but for the purposes of this, you'll be human. But th what this gives you is like a swim speed. You get this amphibious here. You can breathe water and air, call the wave. You get some little minor water magics here from all just from your uh, race. So yep. that'll be that'll be helpful. Um, class, uh, I'm guessing our, how vast, without like ruining anything, giving anything away, <laughs> and it's gonna be hard. Part. Yeah, yeah, this is the tricky part that I was, I was thinking about. But what uh, power level would you say he's at? If you could, I know it's going to be hard because it's more like Matrix and it's well, more ethereal. What, what is the power level? What does it go up to? So in this, uh, like, it's hard to describe. This would be level, they're level 10 characters. So it'd be like a mid range power level. Uh, yep. In terms of your character, how, how, extensively can you manipulate water and is it only water manipulation or is there sort of other um, inertia to his power um he can manipulate water uh and it's it has to be close to him uh so okay. just say if there's like a puddle of water next to him uh i don't know say on the other yeah, side yeah. of the room he could he could manipulate that from where he's standing um, but if, if he wants to do something really interesting with it, a lot of the times he has to be actually physically touching the water. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, and as, as to what he can do with it, um, he, he can, you know, he can, I mean, manipulate it, pick it up, throw it around. Uh, um, can he increase its volume or does it have to work no. with the amount? Okay. He has to work with the amount that's there. He doesn't create water. So if he doesn't have any water around him uh yeah that's that's a problem for him okay uh for the we can we can work that in or we can for the purposes of this sort of fluff that out because of the whole elseworld else world aspect of the of the game that's up to you we can discuss whether you want that to be a hindrance because we can easily work that in yeah there's gonna be other people with some magic um, yeah, see. yeah, it's. I mean, this is a the Lucent is uh, this. Uh, I say sci-fi fantasy, but um, I mean, it's it's fantastical. There's no <laughs> there's no science behind this. Uh, it's um, and so what I'm doing right now is just picking your arcane like tradition. This is going to be sort of specify what your wizard does because there's different schools of magic, similar to like yep. Harry Potter and stuff. Evocation yep. is going to be your damages, like like summoning what stuff to do damage and. 
any spell you pick, if it says like lightning bolt, for instance, we can fluff that as, as uh, water. It doesn't have to be specifically what the description is. That's one of the cool things about these games. Cool. You can sort of just make things whatever you want them to be. Sculpt spells. Let's see. Yeah, this one's going to be cool. You can sort of sculpt your spells. All you right. can hit more creatures. So the mechanics of the game, I don't know if you've ever um, seen like a it's sort of like a board game mechanics in terms of spacing imagine like a chessboard right yeah and there will be depending on where people are you'll have different distances and then you you're in combat you can sort of target other people and when it comes to certain spells they'll be like certain feet away you know you, they'll be within range or if they're within this range there'll be different effects and stuff like that it just there's a lot of uh insular mechanics that i will be sort of just running through on the fly. You won't really necessarily have to worry about those. You can just, as a player, ask me, this is what I do. This is what my character does. And I'll sort yep. of, as a computer, run all that stuff on my end real quick. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's, I want to make sure you knew you don't have to do a whole lot of calculating other than maybe roll a couple of dice and add up what you see in front of you. This is like when I try and teach someone how to do a few things in Photoshop and I'm just oh, yeah, kind of whizzing through it and they just look at me like, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is one of those things you kind of have to learn it as you, as you play. I mean, you don't yeah. have to, but it really helps if you learn it as you play. Yep. And so this, I've been telling I'm everyone. Game, I'm a big game guy, by the way. Uh, we're a big oh, nice. game board family. Uh, I don't play video games anymore, but um, board games, I mean, we don't get into D&D, obviously, but uh, we're a big game family, so I, I like all this stuff. I'm really happy to do it and be oh, nice. involved. Yeah, this is, this is really close to board games. It's literally part of the same family. And so for this, this is just an ability score improvement. You can pick these things called feats mm -hmm. that give you these separate little little abilities but for the purposes of this game and keeping everything streamlined i'm just giving people ability score improvements so we'll come back to this yep um and ability scores will be like if you're a video game guy you know like strength dex con all that yep. stuff yeah um, potent cantrip yes this will give you a little more damage and then we'll go with the ability score again so uh, let's go to your abilities so this is the array we have i didn't know exactly what you're going to pick so i just threw them in down the line and it's yep. going to look different if other people have made their characters. I sort of went in and, and fixed that. So mm -hmm. other people who are looking at this don't have to worry about that. But uh, for your character, intelligence is going to be the most important for manipulating magic. So I would suggest we throw the 18 here. Okay. And strength probably, how strong is your is the character in terms of like physically? without Without water. All these guys who uh, you know have tapped into these abilities, they can have... Uh, they can be fair, like fairly stronger than a normal person. So like they would beat a strong man probably in an arm wrestling competition, but we're not okay. talking super duper, you know, not All talking right. like other super superheroes with crazy super strength. It's just within, within normal bounds of uh, kind of, I mean, just sort of step outside a little bit of, of reality. Yeah, just, so, just almost like a Captain America level. Just on the, just, just, just just the end Captain of the peak. Yeah, just that's right. Peak. Okay, so would you say your character is more dexterous or more strong? In terms of if you had to rate those two things uh, against each other. I would other? say strong. More strong, okay. Yep. I'll say the 14 here for now. This is a 12, so don't forget it. Um, in terms of like how uh, hardy he is, how how well can he take damage? What do you What would you rate him in terms of like... He can take a punch pretty well, or if he took a punch, he's got glass jaw sort of thing. I would put that fairly low. Okay. So we'll uh, he relies on the on his ability with the water. So I mean, his body obviously he's there's a lot of water in his body, so he has a ability to kind of deflect any life threatening blow towards him by, uh, you know, sort of liquefying his body a little bit. Oh, nice. So that it doesn't um, doesn't hurt him, but you know, if he if he didn't do that and and uh, he just you know copped a punch from someone, he would be in serious trouble. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, we'll go with the ten there, and we'll mm -hmm. do this for your strength and your dex. Your intelligence is good. Now, in terms of wisdom and charisma, wisdom is like in reading people's uh, in um, body language. Uh, your your basic senses like smell and sight and stuff like that so would you say this dude is more charismatic or more aware of his surroundings if you had to put those two things against each other 
I would say more aware of his surroundings. Okay. Well, then we will put the 16 in wisdom. And boom, there is your uh, abilities. Your abilities are basically done. And then we can let's see. We got a 14, 12, 12, 18, 11. All right. Go back to class. And then it's after racial we... bonus. <laughs> oh, racial bonuses. Yeah. This. So, like, in races will give you like racial traits plus two okay. constitution. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's probably going to come under fire for from wizards soon they're already getting into their races one of the I races mean, I'm, I'm right there with you crackhead uh <laughs> i had no idea about any of this other than what stranger things have shown me exactly <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of people's uh it, it, stranger things is a good is a good uh, example compared to some of the other ridiculous stuff that's out there let's see skills so does your does your character kind of understand um the magic and like the dreams does is he aware of it to where he can manipulate it or is it sort of unless you don't want to give that away we can just you don't have to say but yeah no he's fully aware of everything okay we'll give him some knowledge of arcana so you actually know magic a little bit and then you said he was good at his surroundings so we'll say investigation so he can actually like do some I'm so but, glad you're here, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chemo so far is the only person I think besides Bandito who has um, some experience with tabletop, uh, I believe. Let's see, and then for this one, we'll want to do intelligence, intelligence, so you can get a just have a. Everyone's got a twenty. And then where is surroundings? Is a sixteen? So let's make it so you don't have a negative in your charisma in case you want to talk to people <laughs> all right <laughs> let's not give you any any negatives there because that's that's not okay so spells this is stuff we can kind of fluff however yep acid splash would be a good one because it's liquid base this would be just a, a close range damage spell and you said yep. he can sort of deflect stuff by making himself watery so a good cantrip yes. would be blade ward because this basically has damage it's not the best cantrip a lot of cantrips are sort of uh they're just free things you can do whenever, so they're not super powerful, but you get five of them, I believe, because you're a wizard, yeah. Chill touch. So it'd be like turning water cold, sort of we'll say. Okay. Mm. What else would be a good one? Do you have any um here's a little bit of giving away something? Do you have any but this happens in the first shape one? Is there anything where he um can because he can like get into the water and move around in it. Uh, like it's sort of, it acts as a teleportation for him. So he, he can like go from one, if there's a body of water, for example, if there's enough water, he can go from somewhere to somewhere else uh, through the raw water really quickly. Uh, um, so there's like teleportation spells, but the, those will get, those will be later. And you can always fluff them as like, you can't use it unless there's a water and then you can specifically, yep. Yeah, we can we can change the spells to fit that perfectly. Yeah, cool. Um, let's see how many more cantrips do we have? One more. We got shape water. Obviously, would be a good one. And then let's see. True strike would be kind of good. It uh, basically just gives you. It makes you good at hitting people, so you can like use the water to enhance your ability to hit people, sort of. Absorb elements. That'd be good. Hey, Shay's here. She says, Hey, Duders. And what Ryan Miller say? says, I'm here, Bancroft. What the F are you doing? I have no idea, man. I have no idea. I'm just <laughs> going. Uh, Woodrow and I, are, he's helping me through this. Uh, this is uh, a new thing called uh, Character Crux. It's a, it's a show that uh, these guys are putting on, and they're going to pit uh, our characters uh, from all the different Comic Skate projects against each other in a and d Battle, battle um, royale. It's it's not going to be against each other. It's actually a cooperative. Okay, yeah, well, it's, gonna be it's going to be whatever whatever D and D is. <laughs> yeah, D and D is usually a team oriented game where you solve uh, obstacles and problems and stuff like that in a narrative fashion. It's uh, based off a lot of improv. It's improv and dice rolling. If you want to break it down to its base elements, I'm down. Um, chromatic orb. Let's do that. How many spells do you get? 15. Let's go to the bigger one. Shield is a good one because that blocks. We can always fluff it as water. Thunder wave. Do, 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 do. do you know what all these things do? Me? 
Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, a lot of them <laughs> for the most part. If I do, I know ever the way all the rules are worded specifically. No, uh, there's a lot of spells that people don't use for whatever reasons. Um, they're either not advantageous or people just want to do damage or whatever. But um, yeah, I know a lot of them. Misty Step, that's a teleportation one that we can use. It's a short distance one, but there's other ones. See, can he sort of, he would be able to sort of form, let's say, a blade out of water, right? And sort of fight with that if he wanted to, or? Yeah, he can, but it, I don't, I don't, I mean, the water will stay as water. Water, so, I mean, okay. It depends how effective it is. Uh, would depend on you know what it's up against. It, it, he does he doesn't like he can't harden water or anything like that. You know, it, it's mostly to do with the how much water there is, is to how okay. strong he can be. Uh, you know, water is very destructive uh, when there's a lot of it, but when there's not that much of it, uh, but you know. he can still drown someone pretty easily. Oh yeah, yeah, and he can't drown obviously. Sleep storm would be a good one. We could always change it to water and not have it cold. Uni beam. Um, that's one I made. Freaking Iron Man chest beam. Control water. Here we go. Conjure minor elements. These are some of the other ones. Dimension door is another further teleport one. You get like 500 feet of teleportation. There you go. Ice storm. Where is. There's like water walls and stuff. And oh, here we go. Wall of fire. Cone of cold. Can't really control wind. Do, 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 do. Dream. That might be an interesting one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a he's also a master in the dream space too. So he's like, oh, a, nice. Oh, you know what would be interesting then? Can he manip? So say in the dream world, since in this else world, the dream powers get sort of uh, molded with reality. Could he in someone's dream, like make them freeze, like sort of get into their head and sort of control them in their own dream by chance or? Uh, um, not really. No. I mean, okay. he can, he can, uh, like make them, you know, he, he can, I guess, you know, manipulate what's happening in the dream. But, uh, in, in my story, the dreams still don't, it's not like the matrix or anything, you know, where you, whatever happens in the, you know, in your head affects you in real life uh, outside, you know, it's... Mm, okay. Like he can communicate with you, but that's about it. Okay. So, yeah, dream would be a good one. Basically, that's what it does is it communicates with people. I think it's got some other qualities to it, but you don't really necessarily have to use them if it doesn't fit, if you don't want to. Um, and you could also, since this is role-playing and improv, it's not necessarily stuck to your story because these characters are quote-unquote 3D printed into this universe. Yeah. You uh, you can sort of expand on them and play with them if you want and do things that necessarily the character might not do because that'll be a disclaimer. Yeah, based on. I wanna... Yeah, based on, exactly. Okay. And that, so we got so teleport. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I think we got most of the spells. We just have to prepare them, but they're click let's see how this works i've actually haven't made a wizard so i'll have to play with uh putting them in the spell book and so oh here we go yeah and i prepare them sweet okay so spells are actually done too and uh for the finer stuff before we get Made going comics has a important question yes it is so if you would like to customize the size it's it's all just let me know the specs <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so background if, if you don't want to give any of this away we can just pick something for its mechanical benefit but uh what uh sort of background do you have if that's something you can just uh divulge um all right uh <laughs> yeah, yeah we can just go for the mechanical benefit then um, yeah let's do that because we'll yeah his, his background is pretty part of the fun okay cool yeah yeah, yeah. then that's not we just pick hmm. this might not matter then and it just gives you basically some other skills so let's say what does folk hero give us animal handling and survival acolyte i want to do acolyte yeah some languages that yeah, this will be good insight and religion i don't know how what religion plays a role in your game but in uh, fairly fairly high yeah oh nice cool that's actually dope then we'll say deep speech because that's an alien trade language and so for the languages talking to 
aliens in my world kind of all know English or different forms of uh, Earth languages because when they were in, when humans were introduced into like the quote unquote uh, Galactic Federation sort of thing, the tech that uh, they were trading wasn't really good. So what they traded is culture. So all the aliens adopted our movies and uh, our music and all that stuff. So a lot of them talk, and so it's just a writer's excuse for me not to have to create a bunch of languages. And yep, I like it. So, yeah, languages is, is a really weird thing to do in comics. There's no good way to do it. Yeah, exactly. There really is no good way to do it. Mm. I've seen some people with some nifty little mechanisms with speech bubbles and stuff but yeah and so this uh, this doesn't matter if you have a character because you're you're the writer and the creator of this character so your physical characteristics and personal characteristics you know and can rattle off you know you can play off these and you can describe these i'm sure pretty fairly considering you draw them all the time mm -hmm. um so that you don't have to do this is all you can ignore that. We just we got the mechanical benefit from this. And then from here it would be equipment, which does he use a weapon? I think is he the guy with the pipe? No. Oh, no, no. He, no. he used okay. a weapon. He has no weapons. His his hands okay. are his weapon. <laughs> his mind. Yeah. His mind is, is his weapon. weapon. Yeah. Didn't think uh, so. Story man well. Jack is here. It says, I'm here and I'm sub. Well, thank you for being here, Story Man Jack. Very good to have you here. Uh we're we're, we're doing some character crux D, D business it's important stuff oh look and i've said the name there we didn't say the name the name of this guy is lord oh, alwyn cat. oh nice yeah let's it's a uh, lord he's uh, alwyn. Put it in there lord alwyn nice that's a good name. give you a little bit of a hint and his background hmm is that a is that a pretty popular name like is there a historical figure that keys into that uh the name is it tells you it's an origin oh, okay so uh anyone who's into names and uh might be able to recognize uh the style of that name where it's from the time it's from oh dope okay that's cool i like that I, that's one of the reasons i like george r. r martin and stuff i know you know people have their things with him but uh i like writers who go into names and, and hide clues and names so Yeah, Story Man Jack says this will be awesome. I use D and D character sheets for my novels. Oh, and nice. Shay likes that. Good idea. Yeah, but basically, yeah, that's that's how quick and easy it is to make a character in this because you're we're, we're for the most part done, and we can mechanically jump into a game and start slinging spells and playing. All right. So, it, um, is that something that I have to go in and kind of like those spells sort of like uh edit them up a little bit uh no so that's just going to be all in terms of your like role playing with it so when you go, when you cast a spell or manipulate something you basically can say what you're doing and if if you won't know like what spell exactly to use i can tell you right there in that instant it'll be this you can you know and tell you what spell to click on and it, on in this the way it works so this is your character sheet right here oh my cat is destroying my hand um, <laughs> you don't have a hail of cat do you <laughs> I don't know if we can deal with another hairless cat on this show. <laughs> no, it's not hairless. My, I've got a big hairy cat. Okay, I know, buddy. But uh, <laughs> so in here, you go into your uh, your spells, and you can just literally click on them, and it'll pop up and tell you like all this stuff, so you can read it there. And there's a dice roller in here too, so you don't actually have to go out and physically get dice. So if it tells you like you know so many dice, you can just click uh, roll. Let's see, can you edit the amount? Yeah. Okay. So you just. Pick how many you're rolling by clicking on it and then roll and it'll roll and give you the, all the stuff. So you actually don't have to really do any math. That's cool as. No. It's pretty nice. It's a good system. Storyman Jack says Alwyn does sound very familiar. Yes. And look, he's written the uh, archaic version of it with the Y. Hmm. Yes. Yes. I mean, we're one to have that name a long time ago. Yep and uh still be around today in the 21st century one might uh want to modernize it a little bit to get the scent off his <laughs> history <laughs> yeah man i really i can't wait i'm glad you gave us uh all a little peek into more of your comic through this too because i'm really excited for this story man i love this all this dream stuff when you and frago had that stream we're talking about dreams man i was i was really happy i love all that stuff Hex Allen says, lol, nerds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I can't dream, though. I don't ever remember my dreams. Probably because I smoke weed. Everyone dreams, but not everyone remembers them. So if you didn't yeah. dream, you'd probably be a vegetable. 
That's what I oh. learned. Uh, <laughs> so it is a necessary element of um, your psychological health and brain health. Uh, but uh, remembering them is a whole nother thing. And yeah. usually it's the people who um, just have good visual memories in general are the ones who talk about their dreams a lot. Uh, like I said, I said the other day, you know, I've got memories uh, stretching back to around two years old. Uh, obviously not many, but there are some. And, uh, and yeah, some other people like, oh, yeah, me too, it's me too. And, yeah, they were the same ones who were really into the whole dream thing. So it's probably all connected. I think my youngest is like four or six. I don't remember how old I was, but, I, you know, do you remember the original cell phones that came out? They were like big gray blocks. I yep. don't know. Yeah, I, I tried to flush my dad's down the toilet for some reason when I was a kid. Never, I, I can see it in my mind in the toilet, like sitting there <laughs> with the water going around it, and, and then I can hear his voice yelling. But that's all I can remember. It's 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 pretty crazy. I remember my dad eating an apple in front of me, and he must have been doing a little joke because he ate the whole thing, core and all. And I just thought he was like a Superman because he could eat the whole apple. <laughs> Dang. What a weird memory to have. Yeah. It's just strange stuff. Uh, Skip Ada's Arts asks, have you seen City of Lost Children, Old Man Steals Dreams to Stop Aging? Oh, that sounds cool. I've not seen that. Is it good? Is it a movie? Is it a TV show? What is it? It sounds like an old 80s movie almost. Uh, Shay says, uh, Carla, you need to get on with Chaotic to help you. You definitely do. I mean, seriously. I would not have been <laughs> able to do any of this. It's like you're speaking another language half the time. Well, it kind of is. I've been doing it for, I think, around 15 years now. So I, I can run through a lot of, this, especially this. It, like, if I were to sit down and learn a new system, it would take me some time. But this, it's it's so easy. It's just plug and play, basically, for everything. When was this uh, all stuff invented? d, &D. Oh, The history of D&D. &D. It gets, it's pretty crazy. I think it was the 70s, uh, late 70s, mid 70s, early 70s, somewhere in there, maybe, maybe even the 60s. But Peak Gary Gygax. Con. Yeah, if you want to know, look up Gary Gygax. He's the guy, I'm pretty sure he's the guy who invented D&D. &D. But uh, did he, did he, is he still alive? I don't think so. I, I wonder if he died yeah, I don't think rich he is. or poor. There's a lot of people who nerd out over the history of D&D, man. There's so much to it, like the whole satanic panic and all that stuff. Oh, nice, man. That's oh, story, man. You're going to have to come to uh, where I was uh, born. Character Crux. It's um it's their new show. What is it going to be on is it going to like go around to different channels yeah. or is it Yep. So the regulars from what I understand, I don't know exactly who's all on board for having it on their channel as of right now, but I know Bandidos will be the first. I think Shay might have it on hers um and I'll have it on mine. The very least it'll be me and Bandido, but I don't know. We we're I think switching through uh, everyone's channels though. But that'll yeah, all be awesome. figured out before Tuesday. Apparently he died poor. That just sounds yeah. sensibly the way, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what I thought. Unless you are a brutally, uh, I mean, when I say brutal, I mean honestly brutal. If you're one of these people who create these huge things, uh, you know, you get screwed out of it unless you're an absolute psych a sociopath. Even things that aren't that huge, you're really lucky to kind of hold on to it. Uh, look, look, with um, uh, Doug to Naple lost his thing. Yeah, uh, uh, Rob Liefeld famously signed away uh, his his um, characters and stuff. And but you know, I don't know if you've watched. I love watching biopics, like oh, the nice. Steve Jobs one. I love that I actually stuff. I haven't seen that one. I do like biopics, but I have yet to watch that one. I haven't really watched and movies. Or TV I, hope, I hope they're realistic because God, yeah like to be in that world where you've created this thing that's going to take over the world you know oh and also the facebook one I yeah know, i mean i don't know how realistic they are but like they they have to be a some part of you has to be a complete sociopath to just pretty much step over everyone who helped get you there and take it all for yourself <laughs> yeah that, that stuff scares me that's why i just want to be like i just want to make my own little books and put my books out. I don't want to, I'm not trying to change the world or, or save, save the industry or anything. I just want to tell my stories. That's the goal. Yeah. And I, I just, I like to have fun with people. I like this, doing this stream stuff 
for um, two months now has been just a complete surprise and such a great, you know, just such a great, great part of my day. Just yeah, I could hang out and chat and say so I could see how it could be really rewarding and become addicting to do this all the time. It is, it is. And you kind of see it when a show goes away. You know, sometimes there's shows with lots of people on it. And then, you know, the main guy has to stop it for whatever reason. The show goes away. All those other people are like, well, whose show am I going to go on now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jump from stream to stream. She knew. Oh, she knew. Is that, hey, is that great? Um, Graham Nolan just uh, DM'd me. That's awesome. I'm going to get Graham Nolan on the show. Oh, nice. That's amazing, yeah. man. He I'm was glad that your show's brought up. It's, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, just kind of right place, right time, right attitude. Uh, I guess, uh, obviously, people have really taken to the Lucent. And, um, yeah, you know, my show came about just as uh, all the shit hit the fan with all mm. the infighting. And yeah. I was like, fuck that. Uh, I'm not I'm not fighting all my friends. Yeah. Um, so I was like, well, let's just chat and have fun and sell books. And a lot of people like that. Man. So am I, am I fully set up now? Do I have to do anything else here? No, in terms of character creation, you don't. It would just be reading off of this sheet at this point, what you want to do. Um, so if you would say something like, I want to trap this guy in water for instance we could look at your spells which would be click on spells look look through here to uh, you know ask what you want to do uh, i haven't put your spells in here but you basically look through them and yeah. uh, or ask me i would give you a spell you'd look for it click on it and it would this will tell you exactly what the description is and i will already kind of know it because i'll be in here too looking with you so i can run you through everything and it'll tell you what dice you need to roll and if there's a save, so the way spells work, say like you go to cast a spell at someone, it'll either be an attack roll on your, your part, which will be this D20 right here. Boom, roll. It'll roll and it'll give you a, a total and you'll tell me what that total is. And uh, it'll they'll have an AC you're trying to hit basically. Or you'll cast a spell and they'll have to make a check versus your spell save, which should be yeah, right here, spell save DC. And then this will be what you plus to the DC when it rolls because it's your spell attack. It's pretty awesome. It's all literally right. right I can't in believe that someone has actually built all this. this I know, is, right? <laughs> this is insane. Yeah, I've uh, actually used this to build my own too. It's there's a lot to it. All right. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Awesome. Awesome. Um, speaking of uh, the Lucent, let's have a look at that because it's oh, actually yeah. moved a little bit since we Cute. ended last night. I'm so happy you extended. Yeah, uh, I remember um, I kind of based my uh, campaign off Carlo Rose Deathsworn. I really liked okay. the way he did his campaign. Yeah. It was all hum harmoniously designed and everything uh, and simple. And I remember that he ended his campaign at something like 17,000 or something. And now he's, he's kept it in, in demand. And he's, yeah, he just keeps ticking up and up and up. So, uh, yeah, we finished on, what's that, uh, 491 backers. And since then, we're up to 505. Uh, I mean, and, and it's stripped back too. So why can't I scroll down here? Oh, no. <laughs> we're stuck in this mode. I can't click anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do now? Uh, nothing. My, um, my computer's just frozen. So the stream is still running. I can still talk, but uh, I can't move. I'm paralyzed. This is like in a dream when you have sleep paralysis. <laughs> Dude, my friend has sleep paralysis. He, he tells me about it. He's like the exact opposite of me. He remembers all of his dreams. They're not super lucid, and or they are super lucid. And uh, yeah, he told me about how he's had that same experience everyone has where it's someone sitting on you and they're holding you down or standing right next yeah. to you. It's like, it's crazy stuff. Yeah, when I mean that's what it feels like. And uh, I used to dream. I think I mentioned this to Dan once. I used to dream my wife. She would go uh, earlier than me. She'd leave early. I'd sleep in and have these crazy dreams. And uh, yeah, I feel her. I feel her sit down on the bed and 
like touch my hand or you know stroke my hair or something and i could feel it as real as anything and i know that uh, i have had dreams where they're more like nightmares in that scenario where you know yeah. you you do you are stuck so you're completely paralyzed so and it does feel like someone is Oh, there he goes. He just got kicked out. All right, everybody. July 7th, I believe it is. Let's look at the day. I believe it's July 7th. Yes, the 7th, next Tuesday, Character Crux. Me and Bandito hosting a D&D &D free for all. All you can eat story. <laughs> um, yeah, dead air. Awesome. There we go. All right. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, you're back. How long did I go out for? Not too long. I was just panicking for like 15 seconds, probably. It yeah, like, like, my computer restarted because of a problem. <laughs> so it just, the computer just died. It was just like, mm -hmm. wild card. Don't forget about wild card now. Man, I, I seriously can't wait for all these characters to interact and fucking interplay with each other. It's going to be so sweet. We got, I believe, the daughter of death or something like that with Grim. We haven't made her character, so I haven't gone over it uh, with her, so I'm not 100%. People popping in and out of dreams. We've got a, a cartoon bull in Kilgore. Wild, Card, Wild Card's basically a, well, he goes through all these different parts in time, I'm guessing, is what Phil said. Magic Hammer, all kinds of crazy nature spells, Talking Wolf. It's going to be awesome. Oh, man, Kilgore's going to be sweet. That uh, grenade launcher you have is going to be pretty fun. I made it nice and uh, OP for you. Who, um, who's who? Who have you got going in there, Phil? Is it uh, Crimstone? No, it's a wild card. Wild card. Okay. Yeah, he's pretty cool. He uses like he's got this deck, this magic deck, and uh, that he uses and he uses a like a tattoo of a Joker card to sort of channel the magic, and that's how he sort of casts his spells. He's also got like this magic hammer. I, it reminds me of Thor. I don't know if that's exactly a good description or not, but that's what it evokes because it's a magic hammer in my mind. And then I'm actually excited about the talking wolf. Uh, he said the sarcastic, wisecracking wolf, it seemed like. So I'll be excited to play that, actually. I like uh, messing with the characters and being the smart ass. So. <laughs> when is all this kicking off? July 7th, yeah, Tuesday. <laughs> that's, that's what I went off when you disappeared. I was just like, uh... July 7th, Tuesday, character <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Sorry July 7th. About that. What a time for the computer to just say, no. Nah. Yeah. Screw you. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got to get um, this guy in on it. Do you know Matt Fitzgerald, Planet Tobor? Oh, that yeah, it's Planet. Oh, yeah, but I know Planet Tobor. He's a good Yeah, dude. yeah, we've got to get him on it, get his, um, his uh, character from the game in on it. Oh, game. dude, I know. That's what I, when we and Betty were talking and, and going over people. He mentioned Tolbor, uh, and I think I'm pretty sure we he talked to him. But uh, yeah, that that uh, that Savage would have been a good. It would have fit perfectly. Like I have a cartoon character, a video game character, and then comic book characters all together. But uh, his game Savage is pretty cool, man. I like the mechanics of that game. I love those side scrollers. Who was the um? Who was in the chat earlier who asked how you start a story? Do you remember who that was? I can't go back anymore. I've lost everything. The start and the end. Um, it's someone in the chat at the very beginning of this asked a pretty big question, which was how do you start a story? And for me, uh, obviously, I have this one story. But uh, for me, I like to start with a premise, as in what if. Uh, hmm. What if the world was this way? Yeah, that's a good what way to say it. Up. What would it look like? And that way you can build out a universe. You don't have to worry about characters and story arcs and interactions and conflict. And you just say, and with me, it was what if the things that you do in a dream, you know, could actually exist? Or if people can, you know, learn to dream really crazy stuff, you know, what if you could 
sort of bring that out into the real world? What would the world look like if that was possible? And it, it literally just started from there. You, you've you mentioned that uh, in yours, you've also got the element of like corrupt corpor corporations. Is that something you've mentioned? I can't remember if... Yeah, yeah, these secret societies. Yeah. Well, that's part of it. I mean, that's that that came from that initial question. You know, what what would happen if um, you know people had abilities, and then what would happen if they started to hide them and hoard them yep. and control it? Well, that's human nature. So that's definitely what would happen. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then and then they become the gatekeepers of mm -hmm. huge channels of power. And then they start, you know, metering out depending on who they want to, who gets, you know, to have a little slice of this power. Yeah. Uh, you know, they can, they can control a lot of shit because, you know, they can go to, you know, they, I mean, and if they've, if they've been around since the beginning, you know, they're going to be the ones who are building the cities and building the empires and controlling mm -hmm. who has what and everything like that. And they have all the uh, knowledge. So they have all the knowledge. Uh, they have all the power. So does uh, that, so that I was gonna say, does that make Ellie then, if if that's the the premise and the concept, and you have these corporations, that does that make her the person who g figures out she has the powers beyond their control, and then she becomes hunted? <laughs> she's um she's a unique uh, person in the in this world of people with crazy powers. She is a a person with unique powers. Oh, nice, uh, nice. She's not the okay. first. She's not the first, and she won't be the last. But at the moment, uh, it's her. Oh, nice! And, um, and yeah, so she, I mean, we're gonna see her go from just, you know, a person who has some pretty cool dreams, but otherwise, you know, works in yeah. a bookstore and looks after her grandfather. Uh, to you know, she'll she'll be sort of at the center of, of all this and then that's that that's a cool i mean that, this is the sort of stuff that you do after you've passed the what if phase uh you know you kind of figure out okay how do i actually craft a story that is you know works mm -hmm, and yeah. something that you want to read well you, you know it's good it's a good way if you've built this universe to have a character who's new to the universe and uh you know you can see everything th through her eyes you know she'll be she's obviously going to be asking the questions like what the hell is all this mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's my favorite yeah. way to learn universes and stuff and world building is through the eyes of the character as opposed to just exposition dumps because there's been uh, some of that that it's just like, okay, I'm gonna put, it makes you put the book down sometimes and you're like, okay, oop. Yeah, I don't mind it uh, if it's well done. Um, yeah. But, uh, as, as well, you know, the problems are it can take away a lot of the mystery. Mm -hmm. It can yeah. slow the story down. Uh, you can just sort of integrate it into the story bit by bit. And yeah, you know, you leave your readers uh, hanging a little bit, you know, but also another way to look at it is you leave them wanting more. They want yeah. to know more. And, and they start to give you fan theories. <laughs> yeah, but then you get like, I like when you have like good little lines of dialogue you come up with that give like, you're like, oh, that's going to be good. It gives them a little crumb, but it doesn't give too much away. And it's going to get them thinking. And then when you start thinking about what it could be, if you didn't know, you start making your, oh, that's what I do. I start making my own theories about what it could be. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if people are going to do the same thing. But, yeah, and the best crumbs are the ones that are ambiguous the first yeah. time you read it. And then once they've read uh, later chapters, they can go back mm -hmm. and it's crystal clear yep. what was meant. I also like, yeah, the, I like uh, that stuff. the unreliable narrator. So like, we're just, just because the character's told something doesn't mean it's true because they're being told from another person. Um, you know, and you're... And yep. I like that too, because then when they read it again, yeah, you can catch some things. That's why I like George R. R. Martin actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I reread yeah. his books for that. Yeah, I thought he. Uh, I only read the first book. Um, I didn't have time to read anymore. <laughs> I thought the way he wrote his novels was really clever. Mm -hmm. The way you know he's got obviously he's got this huge ensemble co uh, cast and. There's no real main characters, but obviously there are sort of focuses from book to book. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the way he did it by, um, by you know, focusing each chapter on that person, it, it just seems to be like that's a way that you could really manage it and actually get the book done. He hasn't yep. been doing that of late, but <laughs> I imagine <laughs> yeah. if I were to ever do a book, a story like that, that would be a really, it'd just be a manageable way to do it. Mm -hmm. Because if you're doing it kind of, 
more traditionally how it's just chapters go on you know this chapter is about whatever helms deep and this chapter is about the this the you know whatever event is taking place then you kind of have to just really start you know again with each chapter and it's you know it could, could get really overwhelming like oh have I, have I said enough about this person have i said enough about that person whereas if if you're going character by character then you know you don't really have to deal with i don't know um joffrey too much if you're mm -hmm. eye of yeah. star hanging yeah, out you can give the you can give people just what they just what they need from each character and then move on and then come back when it's important and you can you can keep the story hot and relative that way as opposed to these low yeah, and let the like reader color. piece it together exactly some of the yeah. best some of the best youtube uh experiences that i've had are channels of people who've pieced it all together through the books yeah of lord of the rings uh sorry game of thrones uh and you know they, they they put it all together in one bit you know whereas this stuff is all spaced out between multiple books across multiple characters uh, per, uh perspectives and they've taken all those bits out and put it all into one uh narrative that you can really you know sink into but then um, i did all that before i watched all that stuff before the last season because uh, i thought you know there's been slipping in a few seasons but they're you know this is game of thrones they're going to really take the time and spend the money and get it all perfect Oh, and what a waste of time that was yeah <laughs> i was really depressed because what, what you were talking about like people putting the books together and stuff is what got me super excited about the show and got me rereading the books because i did the same thing i read the first one i was like oh this is this is an interesting style of fantasy but then when i heard the show was coming out and i started watching those videos i did that you know i reread and got excited and yeah it was the same thing i got just just a waste it was just a waste of time <laughs> an abysmal waste of time and money uh, be, uh, and plus i had just before the eighth season started i'd also gone back and re-watched the first one to five seasons Oof, yeah and they were just phenomenal so good <laughs> and then you uh, and then and the, it didn't end it didn't change all in one go it changed no. with little cracks mm -hmm. here yep. and there that i just kind of i excused because they had built up so much goodwill over Trust. the years so it didn't, you know, pretty much the first three or four seasons, a lot of the story was dedicated on just how long it took to move people from one place to the other and how much of an ordeal that was and how much yep. of an event that was for the king to ride up all the way up to um, uh, Winterfell. It was a massive thing. And then for them to ride all the way back down, it was a huge deal it took up a large, large part of the first season and then to just have oh okay so whole armies now move from the north to the south instantaneously yeah the speed of a raven <laughs> yeah and you just so you kind of start to okay well all right well maybe it's not no, and then it's just bad yeah but then totally. characters start to go then characters start making dumb little decisions against character just because plot and then yeah it was a uh, george r. r martin talked about that too in the at the sometime during the first season he talked about the butterfly effects that were going to happen or maybe it was the second season but and then yeah he was absolutely right yeah i, yeah, I mean talk about a, a story that had real consequences to actions <laughs> yeah i love the um yeah, kind of the message i took away from the first book was do the right thing be the honorable man uh truth and justice and uh all that good stuff in a corrupt evil world and you're going to lose your head mm -hmm. and uh i really like that i, I like that how you know you can't just it, there's, it's more ambiguous than that you yeah, can't just great. be the pure good man superman type character in a world like that you've got to change the world first for the yeah, better somehow yeah, exactly I think that's why we like the story so long for the just the good and evil but sorry no no yeah it, uh, and yeah and what we got in the end was just i mean i didn't even i didn't even know what it is i was just sitting there gobsmacked that they'd that they'd wasted all those seasons and spent all that money and yeah oh god the fact uh, that the actors don't like what they're doing and like 
you can tell when you ask them their face scrunches up and they're like yeah it's great like you could tell it was going to be a, a, a waste and then yeah it was same thing with the star wars too with uh what's his name boyega he'd come out and just start talking crap about the movies too good for him though yeah absolutely um and and mark hamill as well yeah um, yeah yeah he had some moments as well just unbelievable hey boogie bots here we're about to go boogie bot we're up on the hour uh hopefully you can uh, catch the replay um this is a little bit a little bit of a i mean it's a little bit inside baseball today this isn't mm -hmm. what the uh the character crux show is going to be like this is just uh a little bit of a teaser as to what we're uh, what these guys are going to be doing i want to uh, you know have, be a little bit involved here with my character yeah um but uh, yeah make sure you check out uh all these guys channels um Chaotic Neutral, uh, Bandido, Shay. Uh, who else is involved again? Uh, Carla Lee, so Kimo Sabe on Twitter. Um, uh, he's yep. going to be on it. And me, Bandido, Carla, Shay, Phil. Who am I missing? Who knew that uh, so many comic book nerds were also D and D nerds? Yeah. Then there's going to be guests, hopefully every week that we have on me. Yeah, there's Kimo Sabe. I got to get you on the uh, channel one time, Kimasabi. I, I caught you on Oz's channel the other week. Uh, I really like the sound of your voice. You sound <laughs> like another YouTuber that I used to watch called The Independent Man or something like that. I like people with good radio voices. You should come on and chat one day. We should make that happen. Man, I love All right, guys. I think we're up. That's my lunch hour. Yep. I'm going to do one last little plug if i can for the lucent it is still available you will scroll down and find that uh, all the drawing tiers are gone so they're all locked in i know exactly how many i need to draw now uh, i will be finishing off the book the colors on the book uh, getting it all perfect and uh then getting it to print and then when that happens i'm going to be doing all the drawing stuff and then you'll have it in your hands. So you'll tell me, I hate it. <laughs> and I'll cry. <laughs> we will all be the harshest of judges. That's all right. Crit criticism is good. It, yeah, uh, I know it is. Your next book better. He says uh, that chat with um, Oz was a disaster. <laughs> that can happen with Oz. Our chat with him was really fun. We had a fun time. I was probably because I was drunk again. We were talking about uh, Goon of Fortune and bogans and aussie stuff uh but yeah we'll make that happen so yeah look at that we are we're talking aussie dollars now thirty-six thousand aussie dollar dues it's like twenty five and a half thousand us dollars so uh everyone gets this where is it is it gonna load i love that page dude loading. that page of the motorcycle helmet that's like the fa my favorite piece that I've seen because I'm like a big guy. I like I just like like specific panels sometimes. I love that panel. Oh, I can't wait to. Um, I've still got a little bit of work on this just to do some little things on that. But um, yeah, that's a, it's cool. It's in like reflected into his helmet. I really like that as well. Yeah, uh, this I'm working on as well. I've got to finish the ceiling, the line art for the ceiling, uh, and then it's onto coloring. And yeah, I can't yeah. wait to see this colored man. Everyone's getting that. So yeah, like what we what were we talking about? You know, Ella's the uh, she's the she's the Neo at the start of the Matrix, and uh, she's not going to learn everything in this book or even the next or the one after. She's going to learn bit by bit, and she's going to learn through failure, like any yeah. good hero uh, does. Exactly. And so that uh, that's gonna that's gonna be really fun to color. I get some cool light coming in, and it's gonna be really nice. Uh, so yeah, everyone gets that now, and um, I don't know if this keeps going. I might have to um, think about a new stretch goal. Yeah, or well, a fourth of the way there. Trying to, we yeah. need to get that. We need to hit a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, Red Serbia is definitely looking forward to the DND. I know a lot of these people in the chat Thank are. You. And Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks so much for helping me out there because, like I said, I would have had no idea. Yeah, the first time I ever tried to make a character, it was 3.5. And if anyone knows what that means, it, it, it was a whole nother, it was a whole nother fucking beast, man. 
it took a day and a half to make a character if you didn't know what you were doing back then because there was just so much stuff. And while I've got you here, just gonna oh, it's, it's going to be a U, a U instead of an A because I have to make the most difficult names ever with everything. Oh, well, nice. I found it anyway. <laughs> so there you go. Everybody, if anyone here is not signed up, uh, get signed up because look at this. Why wouldn't you be? I mean, yeah. give me a break. That cane and white cover. Get on that. Ooh. Get on it. All right. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you for coming on, man. Yeah, no, thank you for having me, get man. Back to it's work. always fun. No, it's a no, pleasure you... to have you. Make your money. Uh, yes, Planet Sobor. I, I think I did. I mean, Woodrow did. But I was just there for along the ride, and we we made something. And you should make one too. You should get in on this. Yeah, we uh, could have you on the guest. I'd be more than happy to. More people to marry, I, I think. I mean, I don't know how big these things can get, but uh, people can come in and out. And I will see you tomorrow. I'm about to go DM uh, Graham Nolan, see if we can hook up a time. And we're going to talk to him about his book, which is very exciting. Uh, I know the guys, uh, the regulars on the show. Nice. As well as myself, will be very excited to chat with Graham. That's going to be fantastic. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. And we'll see you tomorrow with someone new. All right. Later, catch everybody. Up. Bye.